a heart attack. Fast fatal heart impact. Past painful scars. In fact, I blast tasteful bars and past. I back up my actions. Fact, don't ask. Grab reactions. Jacked attack with every word. Then act with class as they hear me snap. I got nothing to lose. Cause I fought and felt the bruise. Now I'm not the one confused. Call the shots and they produce. I ain't boss. I'm finally loose. Pick a new soul bird's juice. I need the views to boost me to a new abuse of being used. Everybody wants a piece now. Y'all can rest in peace now. You're dead to me, so peace out. Remember you're discreet now. Get ready for the Alrighty, hello, hello everybody, this is Kirusho here, and now, before we do begin, let us give a brief little review. In the last part, a few things happened. We had Izuku and the organization. Izuku took out two spies who may have compromised their location, and somebody was there to witness it. Deku and this person had to make a cover story for why these two are going to be going missing. And right now, they are getting treated for the wounds they have. These two came back bloody, bruised, and beaten. And Haran, he made everybody pack up their stuff and move shop. Because very soon, somebody will be coming by to try and look for them. And if they find them, it can be a lot of trouble for every it can be a lot of trouble for everyone. Now, that was a year ago. And so far, Deku, he's been doing better. As well as the organization somewhat changing how things do operate. People, they had access to firearms. However, some people didn't really think they would need to use them. They're benders. However, the non-benders, sometimes they will still take them. However, right now, Haran, he's told his organization about what to do. Things are getting a lot more... Well, you could say... Up in ante, there's a lot more to lose and a lot more to gain. And people are actually very surprised. Right now, the organization, they are taking more and more on. And they are also trying to do more. Now, again, that was around one year ago. And Deku, he currently is in the shower in his room. And he has a lot to think about. Everything has slightly changed. I mean, how else can you describe what's happening? People are starting to recognize them a lot more. People are starting to look at their organization a lot more. And him and everybody else, they're doing a lot more. I mean, hell, people are actively looking for them. People are actively trying to find them. And right now, Dicker is not really too sure. A lot of things are going on, and, well, Haran, he's left them behind for right now. He is going to meet with another branch of the organization, and he is going to be away for a while. Yokits will be in charge until then, until his return. And Deku, he is somewhat worried about it. He's not too sure what to do, and, well... He does know that there's going to be a mission later tonight. He's going to be a part of it, and so is Koya and a few other people. They are on an infiltration team. They're going to be carrying weapons. And if they do encounter security, they may need to take them down. They're supposed to break into somewhere and retrieve data. I mean, what? They're going to be retrieving this data for what reason, though? That's what he's confused about. Okay, so they retrieve the data, and then what? Hmm. That's where he's confused by things. Because if they just retrieve the data and sell it, what does that do? I mean, it's got to be important or classified, right? But if it's classified data, then this would go deeper than people realize. It wouldn't be going for the organization, right? Or would it? Now, Deku does get to get out of the shower. And he does go to dry his hair and get dressed. As he actually does go to bring his hands up and put his hair upwards into a ponytail. Hmm. Okay, let's see. Train with Lee today. Or... 
do some bending. Or maybe brush up on firearm skills. Hmm. May not be metal bending, but it's pretty damn close. Then again, using a gun. It's a weapon. No, no. Jokic said it himself. It is a tool used. The intention behind it means if it is good or bad. Right, right. Okay, okay. He's got this, right? Maybe... Okay, okay. I'll have to meditate on that later. Maybe you should brush up on firearm skills, though. If they are needed. Now, Deku, he does get to walk out of his room. And when Ray does get to join a few people, you do actually have Koya. And a few of the people who are sitting down. Who do ask him if he is finally done. Hmm? Yeah, sorry about that. Right. Just after training, I had to shower. Dude, don't worry about it. Besides, your B.O. is strong. Yeah, I know. I got that a lot whenever I was training for my firebending classes. Okay. Does that happen a lot? We're throwing around flames hundreds of degrees hotter than our bodies. You tell me. Stupid question. Extremely. Okay, so... Review it again. Okay, um... Koya, do you want to take it from here? Or should I explain it? Boomant, I've got it. L listen, Izuku, you know what we're doing, right? Yeah, we're breaking into this data center and we're stealing something. We're uploading files along with even putting a backdoor into their network for ourselves. That way, people who we have on our side can get inside. And whenever the need to strike it, they can help. Right. Actually, this is part of a better plan. It is? Yeah. I don't exactly know, but... Jokic, he said that it's important that we do this. If we can upload the data that we have and steal certain files, we can just be in and out. After that does happen, then things will be okay. Right, right. And we need a metal bender. Yes, we also need a fire bender. And we may need an earth bender for a quick escape. Yeah. So we have Boomint, and we have me. And there's also me. In case of security guards, I may need to bloodbend. Right. But we could just take them out. Knock them out or incapacitate them. There's no really need for you to bloodbend. Right, but it's just a security measure. Besides, if we trip something, then heroes will come by. And say what you will, but even heroes have blood in them. Right, right, sorry. I appreciate the concern, Izuku. But I can handle it. I know, I know. Are you two done? Or are you going to con continue with your romantic squabble? Boomant, shut up. Please. You two are very immature. Personal relations between members shouldn't be a thing. And yet you two, here you two are. You two are constantly talking about this. You are letting personal feelings get in your way. Boom it. Hmm. What? Talk like that again, and I will knock out a fucking tooth. Hmm? Really? Do you really want to try that? Boom it standing up. You and I both know. In a fight, I will win. You're so cocky about that, yet we've never actually fought. We've trained. And I've taken it pretty fucking easy on you, metalhead. Hmm, I see. Well, if that is the case, then how about we... Now, 
Boomin is going to stop, as Koya is going to look at him with her hand up, and force her hand down as Boomin is going to sit down. Okay, I see your point. Now, are you done? No. But stop it. Boomint, apologize. For what? Boomint, being in a relationship with somebody else in this facility isn't against protocol. Having friends isn't against protocol. And I will have you know this. Me and Izuku, during missions, we do keep things professional. Very professional. Yes, we know our relationship is very difficult to handle, and personal grievances, they're harder to manage on missions. However, both of us, we manage them. Now, I am going to let you go. And if you try to stand up again, then I might make you smash your face against the table. And I do have to say, be careful not to open your mouth. You may bite your tongue by accident. Do you understand? Fine. Just let go. Now, Koya would go to do so. And the moment she does, Boomer does go flying backwards out of his seat. And a lot of people do see that. As Luna would come walking up and sit down. <laughs> what happened to him? Not much. He may have just slipped. Did she bloodbend him again? Yep. Okay, what was it this time? It's our mission tonight. We have to break into this place with data. I don't really know what it's called. But when we get there, then things will be a lot easier for us. We get in, get out, and it's quick. However, we might encounter security if we mess something up. Right, right. Um, should we talk to... Well, you know, Jokic? Probably. Even then, we'll probably just need to shut down the power or overload the power there. We'll get a power surge, and in the middle of the night, it wouldn't be that bad. Overload the grid, and get in and get out. Right, so Boomichu guys is Metal Bender, Koya is there, and then there's you. Right, the Firebender? Yeah. And then there's an airbender, right? No, it's just us. Okay. So, are you sure it's just going to be you three? Uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure. You is on another mission. And I don't think we need an airbender. Your kids didn't have an admission protocol. Right. And how are you guys going to be getting in? Well, like I said, we'll be breaking it. There'll be someone there, but really, I don't know. Um, there's supposed to be another team, but we're not too sure what their role is. Right, right. You guys have fun with that. Meanwhile, I'll be stuck trying to help some of the newbies. Really? Yeah, yeah. We're trying to get more information, but... A lot of people around town, they're a bit skeptical about a few things. I kind of would assume, since there's basically an armory in here. It's not that they're worried about the armory. They're more or less worried because they've heard a few things that we've done before. They have. Yeah. I mean, they think we're doing good, but... A lot of them might need some more convincing. Plus, fact is, a lot of them are very shitty benders. Yeah, that's fair. And you're teaching them why? Because the masters are busy. No one's certain as to why, but Jokic, he's been pulling them all out of teaching duty. Many of them, they actually have been trying to talk and see what's going on. Don't quote me on this, but I think that they're planning for something big. You do? Yeah. But but that's just me. Anyways, uh, you guys enjoy your mission. Now, 
Deku and Koya, they would spend some time together before the mission would begin. And in that amount of time, the two do have lunch. And they do actually somewhat talk about it. What's going to be happening, and how things might go. And even trying to formulate plans as to how to get out of there. If things do go somewhat sideways. And we actually have where Boomant, him, Koya, and Deku do get into a vehicle and head out. And Boomant, he's actually somewhat trying to talk about what might be happening when they do get there. What they're going to be doing is parking down the road. He knows that the other team, they scoured the place out. And they did use old maps to dig under the facility. They did? Yeah. Sewer's not too far off from it. So they just dug underneath. And that's our way in. We have to go through the sewer? Well, yeah. Partially. It's going to reek down there, but when we get underneath the facility, things will be a lot easier for us. We just open up a hole underground, and we're in, someone, we're in some room. After that, we just do what we need to and get out of there. <sighs> what is it? If need be, then we just cut the security system and handle things from there. But, best bet would be to approach things from the front. We don't know what will happen when we open things up underground. Surveillance systems and security guards. Along with that possible police response time. If we're lucky, then the police will arrive instead of heroes. But we're not too sure. Right, right. So, how are we going to play this? Hmm... I have an idea, but I don't think Koya would like it. What is it going to be? Well, um, it would involve your boyfriend trying to cut the power. However, if we cut the power, then the mainframe, along with much of the data, we probably won't have access to. So getting inside would be our first challenge, then cutting the power after we get the data. Okay, so we basically have to turn off the security system, but the plan, what does it involve? Well, we need a security guard. We'd pop at him and do what we need to, but we know that there's at least two or three guards on duty. Right, so she'd need to blood burn one of them. Ah, shit. Okay. So that's it? Right. She'd make it look like one of them had a heart attack. Then, the, whenever the other one goes to try and find them, we take that one out. I, I don't like that plan. Yeah, I don't like it either. That's why it's plan B. Plan A is to break in. We make it look like there was a slight rumble to the ground. Or I could just break open one of the walls where we think there's a blind spot. Or we think? Yeah. Listen, it's either that or we launch ourselves over the walls. And I do have to say, launching over is a good plan, but it's also risky. Okay, so, Boomit, what do you have a plan then? It's going to put a lot of strain on me, and it's going to really me need a lot of focus. Now, Boomer will get to pull into an alleyway, as he does get to get out of the car, explaining a few other things. Right now, what he's going to do is he's going to bend the ground and rip it out of the ground, rip it up. Then, they're going to ride a giant boulder. Whenever they ride over the facility, he'll drop them in. And then they'll do what they need to, and he'll go somewhere else. Find another way inside and keep the vehicle. So this is just me and Koya? Listen, I'm putting a lot of strain just trying to fly and keep this thing steady. Besides, by the time you two get out, you may basically just jump over the fence. Or I can bend it open. Right. Okay, I get it. Okay, good. Now, 
Deku and Koya, they do so want to try to stand still. And Boomit, he actually is going to start bending. Him going to bend rocks over his feet and over Deku and Koya's. As he does, make sure to focus. Him pulling the ground off from underneath them. As the three, they do try to somewhat stop from falling over. It feels strange. Their feet are firmly planted, but their bodies are still shifting and moving. And Boomit, he's trying to keep it steady. As the three do fly over the facility, and Deku and Koya, they are slowly dropped in. They do get on top of a building. And Boomit, he does go to somewhat bring his hands up to bend the piece of rock. As Deku and Koya, they do run over to a door. And go to open it up. Deku, he does bend it. And he does actually force the lock open. As whenever he does go to open the door, he does look around. He doesn't see any security cameras. Hmm. Okay, so what to do, what to do. Hmm. Now, Deku, he does go to run down the stairs. And whenever he does so, he does so try to keep to the shadow. As Koya, she actually is doing so as well. The two, they make their way down the hallway. And they actually see a security guard who is walking around with a cup in their hands. And they're thinking about how, exactly, it's a boring night. It's slow and uneventful. Then again, they're just paid to do their job. Mm hmm. I wonder if my shows are recorded. Hopefully so. Then again, not much is going on. Hmm. Maybe I should stop by somewhere. Get something to eat before I get home. Those meals aren't too fun. Especially when you just gotta heat them up. Not too good. I'm starting to get old. Now, the man is thinking that. And we actually have Deku. Who he does go to someone sneak up behind the man and go to choke him out. Deku does go to throw his arm directly in front of him. Him going to pull backwards as hard as he can. And the man is trying to fight back. Him slamming against Deku's arm and trying to at least go to reach for his gun. However, there actually is Koya. Who? She was going to bring her hands up and grab onto the man's arms. And Deku, he does go with his left hand, charge up electricity, and zap him. The moment he does, the man finally does go to stop moving. And Deku, he actually is very thankful. Them setting the man down carefully. And Deku, he does go to grab onto his radio. As he does get a press down onto it, and ask, well, ask Koya what they need, might need to do. And we actually have it over in the security office. The guy is sitting down, and he is sipping his coffee. He's wondering exactly when the next route will happen, or whenever the next time he can get out of this chair will be. He's been here for a few weeks. The other guy, he's walking around the facility. And, well, he's wondering when he can get out of this chair. Because he really needs a smoke break. Hmm. Now, his walkie-talkie would go off. Him looking at it, I'm going to pick it up. Hmm? Williams, you there? No response. Did you hit the button by accident? No response. Hmm. Damn it, these things are always fucking acting up. Okay, let's see. Where are you on the cameras? I know you're probably trying to fuck with me. Wait. Where? Camera 1, camera 2, camera 3, camera 4. Camera 5, 7. No. Camera 9. That's his coffee a cup, isn't it? Okay, that's a little too far for a prank. Williams. Dude, listen. I see the camera. It's not funny. Where are you? No response. Williams? Hello? Now. The many is confused. As the camera does go to black out. And he's alarmed by that. Something's wrong. Okay, so... 
Williams is clearly hurt. Why else would he use his power? Okay, shit. I'm going to stand up and run. He doesn't know what's going on. But clearly if he's trying to get his attention like that, something might be wrong. Shit, he must be in the blind spot. Now, the man is running down the hallway. And he's slightly panicking. As Murphy does go to turn the hallway, he does directly go to make eye contact with somebody who's standing there. They're wearing entirely blacked out clothing. And they have a mask on. The moment he does see them, he does look right at them. Shit. Now, he does get a turn, and he does get to see another person there. They're wearing a mask as well. Fuck, fuck, fuck. There's two of them. Okay, well, uh, looks like I'll find to use this thing. The birds are reaching out for their gun. And the moment they do get to grab it, we actually have one of the masked people, who do get to bring up their hand. And the man does actually find his arm stops. And then it does get to directly throw itself upwards above his head, before bending in a way that doesn't look natural. And he is actually screaming out in pain. As he actually sent his body fly upwards into the ceiling, before he is smashed back downwards onto the ground. Now, Deku and Koya will go to approach the man, them going to grab his security credentials and leave him on the ground. And the two do try to make their way to the area. Them looking around, and eventually finding the computer. Where they had to bust through a door, and upload the data. They also stole some files. And after that happened, they had to make things look a bit convincing. They know that the network, it will be brought back up after some time. However, they're going to have to delete a few things. Or, in the best way of saying it, smash the computer. The computer, it can be replaced. That's easy. The files, they can be recovered. They're stored somewhere else. The stuff here can just be accessed remotely. So, you know what that means? They get to break shit. Now, the two would do this. And whenever they do go to get out of the area, they actually would cover their tracks. Heading to the security office and deleting footage that they were ever there. Before they do go to get out of there. And whenever they do boom it, he would pick them up. And the three would leave. The entire place has been basically just blacked out. And right now, no one will realize anything's wrong until the morning. However, by that time, what they just uploaded and took, it's already going to be hidden. No one will know, and no one can find out. Anything anyone can do, they would just make it look strange. They can access the files, but they won't see anything wrong. However, now they have a backdoor entrance. And the files they have recovered, they will be useful. However, they're not exactly too sure how yet. Now, with that being said, I do hope you guys enjoyed. And have an amazing day. I'll catch you guys in the next part.